Hey guys, what's up? So the leaf blower in the house, not a great idea. You can try it if you want, but you're gonna probably end up breaking things like we did. And it didn't even blow the dust off the ceiling fans. I still had to climb up and clean all the ceiling fans. It's kind of a mess right now around here. I haven't done a vlog in a long time and I've got quite a bit of things that are kind of on my mind to talk about. So first step here, first vlog, we're moving. And that's what that's about. We're getting the house all cleaned up, but we're also getting the house really dirty and disorganized because we've been going through all the junk we have. I, I hope I never make this mistake again, but I probably will because we're moving to a house that's even a little bit bigger and has a little bit more storage space than the one we have. I have collected so much crap over the last 20 years that we've lived here and like so much of it, some of it probably hasn't moved in 20 years. Like I just took three big bags of books to the Goodwill store that have been on a shelf since the day I moved into this house and some of them haven't moved. I, I, I know that they, they've been there 22 years sitting on a shelf collecting dust. We're looking forward to moving. Uh, we're both excited about it. It's for me, it doesn't benefit Shauna really at all. So she's been, you know, really awesome through this because I'm driving, you know, over an hour to work every day, which in the scheme of things isn't that big of a deal, but I wanted to be closer to where I work and there's some other advantages to moving to Benton where we're moving. Uh, it's not that far, you know, we're not moving that far. It's just a few towns over, but um, it's going to save me a lot of driving time. And it's also going to put me closer to some friends that uh, I ride with. It's going to put me closer to cycle one for I might do some spin class. There's some advantages. There's a lot of disadvantages things. There's a lot of things I'm going to miss. You know, I've lived in Harrisburg my whole life and you know, it's, it's not paradise, but it's a pretty nice town and got a lot of friends and family here and I know things like the back of my hand, um, delivered mail here, delivered, you know, delivered newspapers here. Probably one of the last generations that, that will have that job growing up. It's, it's home and uh, it's going to be interesting to kind of be to a little different place to explore. I mean, I've rode a lot around Benton too. I, I know the roads and I know probably a lot of what I'll probably ride, but it is going to be nice to be in a different place and have some different surroundings. I just found some videos that I've really been enjoying and they're by a, a YouTuber named Drew Dillman. He's a pro cyclist in America, a domestic pro cyclist. He's raced all over the world, but it looks like he's pretty much focused on American racing right now. He's done some awesome YouTube videos. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers. His videos aren't getting a lot of views, but they're really great. Um, he breaks down the races in ways that I really enjoy. So um, I asked on a forum a couple years ago, I think, like, what's the best way to follow domestic racing? Like, if you want to get into the U.S. crits... See, the United States, the U.S. crits doesn't exist anymore, but if you want to get into the, the domestic racing in the United States, what's the best way to follow it? And a lot of people told me, don't bother, it's lame, which I thought, you know, that's that's crappy, but uh, it is it is awesome, but it's hard to follow. You, you, you don't know, you know, like, what's the big advance. I've learned a lot about the big advance and what to follow and some of the stuff, but but a majority, the best way to follow it is from the actual racers themselves. Uh, they produce awesome content. You know, Legion was the first uh, with uh, Corey Williams, you know, just sticking GoPros on his, on his helmet and recording the races. That's one of the first ones I saw. Dillman does the same thing, but he'll take a, a long race instead of just showing you like a few key moments with some music. Kind of, he doesn't narrate it, he doesn't talk, but he just shows you important things and puts graphics on the screen in important moments when he attacked or when something interesting happened in the race. I He doesn't record himself. He's great at editing though. He really does a good job capturing. He shows you the courses, which I think is really awesome too, like the turns and crits and the interesting aspects and layout of the courses and the crits. So if you have a chance, you want to kind of follow up some domestic racing USA crits and stuff. His videos are are awesome. So check those out. I haven't really been doing videos about cameras and drones just cycling. All I've been really doing for a while now is cycling. Uh, I've tried to stay really focused on it and went to the gym all winter, trained all winter. 
uh, I wish I could say that I'm having the best year of my life uh, as far as cycling goes. It's been a really good year, but I'm still having some issues. I'm still having some problems. I sold some drone stuff a while back, sold two of my drones. I'm down to like three drones right now, I think, one of them being the Mavic. Um, honestly, I wish I could have just taken all of the money that I put in drones and bought Bitcoin and sold it when it was high. I bought $80 worth of Bitcoin, um, I think in December of 2020 or somewhere in there. I bought some Bitcoin kind of as a joke. I had money I didn't know I had in PayPal and I just, I saw you could buy Bitcoin on PayPal. So it got up to $500, like my, my $100, I think I bought 20 more later because it just kept going up. So like I had, I had $500 in Bitcoin and now I've actually, I'm in negative, you know, now my money is worth, now my Bitcoin is worth less than I paid for it. So, um, that's kind of sad, but, uh, um, Honestly, though, I do wish I'd never gotten into drones. There's been some pretty awesome things about it, and there's a lot of things I've enjoyed about it. But if I could have that time and money back and put it into cycling or fitness and um, dental work or <laughs> something useful, I could. I wish I could do that. Um, but, you know, drones after a while, you know, they, they start off awesome. You're flying around, you're seeing things from the air, and then after a while you're like, yeah, okay, I'm flying around, I'm seeing things from the air. Um, after a while it gets to be kind of repetitive really for me. I, I didn't particularly care about like improving my drone skills and learning awesome tricks and getting into racing or any of that kind of stuff. And I just haven't really had any, any interest or point or need to fly drones lately. So that's been kind of dead. Maybe that'll come back one day. Um, basically going back to cycling and just a few things that have been on my mind for cycling, uh, angina. Is something that I deal with constantly and I guess it's angina so if, if you don't know what angina is that is when you have this basically feeling like your heart's not getting enough blood I had that when I was very young uh, when I'd go cycling I'd ha if I went really 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 hard all of a sudden my left arm would start to get numb now I mean I had to go really hard for this didn't happen very often but I remember it when I was like maybe 15 and I thought wow I was like, I don't think there's enough blood going to my left arm, you know. And even then, I knew that left arms were like something to do with heart attack and stuff like that. So I've been to the doctor a few times for this. I've had a lot of testing. Nothing came back. They didn't actually test my arteries. Like, I've never had an angiogram. Um, but my heart came back good. No problems with that. I don't have high blood pressure. And I don't have a lot of the things that you would associate with. The, the cardiologist was very confused. You know, he's like, well, you, you, don't, you don't have many of the symptoms that I would expect with uh, chronic pulmonary obstruction disease. I think that's how you say that, CPOD or whatever. Uh, he, he was just kind of like after a few tests and not really finding anything wrong, the cardi cardiologist's goal was like, hey, you could start taking... Um, you could start taking beta blockers and I was like why what's that gonna do and he's like I just think you need to take them it'll let your heart work less and I'm like well I don't want my heart to work less and so I've been dealing with this for years and so far I haven't really had a major issue with it but when uh it's it seems to be very common especially when I'm fatigued the more fatigued I am the worse it is so it could be something totally different maybe I don't know I just don't really want to keep pursuing it medically because the expenses are so high and what I get out of it doesn't seem to help so I recently took a long ride you know semi long ride by myself anytime I take long rides by myself almost always my mind turns to weight I currently you know I haven't lost any weight really lately um, I was doing the weight loss videos I lost about eight or so pounds, seven pounds from, from the beginning of the year. And I've been really stalled. And I was kind of sad and depressed about the fact that after doing uh, a ton of riding in, in June, right now I've actually not gained a pound or lost a pound. I'm exactly where I was. Um, it's kind of, I was expecting to have lost weight after riding, you know, 370 miles one week and 200 the next week. And, 
you know, I, maybe maybe my body will catch up, but weight loss is definitely one of those things. Like if you're um, an overweight cyclist, there's certain things that you it, you you really can't understand this if you've never tried to ride a bike at at you know 250 280 pounds, whatever. I'm I'm at 238 right now, and it, it which is close to the lightest I've been not that far but still way too heavy um, I think about like people riding you know and they're you know 100 pounds lighter than me and like on a flat yeah doesn't make that much difference but the moment that we start going uphill I have to work really hard to keep up and so much harder than somebody weighing 50 100 pounds less than me that's just the cruelty of gravity i guess and why i'll never be a mountain climber so on these long rides i start thinking about weight and thinking about losing weight and fasting seems to be a thing right now people are really into fasting so i thought that would be interesting to read up and watch some videos on and learn about and I thought about, you know, I was like, maybe I'll try fasting. I won't eat lunch, you know. And today, I thought I'd try that. By 10.30, I was feeling dizzy. <laughs> like, I skipped my morning snack, and I was hungry. And I was like, oh, man. But I think it was because I was thinking about it. But I don't think ketosis is something I'm ever really going <laughs> to experience. So, anyway. Well, hopefully... I'll make a video soon from our new house and um, you know it's gonna be a while before we actually live there still have to move so anyway see you later